The RMS Titanic, once the world's largest passenger ship, met its tragic fate in the cold waters of the Atlantic on the night of April 14th and the early morning of April 15, 1912. Its maiden voyage from Southampton to New York ended abruptly when it collided with an iceberg, claiming the lives of 1,496 out of 2,208 people on board. A Titanic survivor in tears declared, the iceberg did not destroy the ship. From cinematic tales of survival to the minutest detail that might have sealed its fate, the Titanic's legacy is both heartbreaking and fascinating. What untold stories and mysteries still linger beneath the ocean's depths? How has this colossal tragedy shaped maritime history? Join us in this video as we unravel the tale behind the destruction of the Titanic ship. People died on the Titanic even before it set out. Did you know that the iconic Titanic, the world's most renowned cruise ship, was meticulously constructed in Ireland? Specifically, it took shape at the Harland and Wolfe shipyard in Belfast. However, the tale of this historic vessel reveals a series of ominous events even before it set sail on its maiden voyage. In the process of its creation, a staggering 28 serious accidents and 218 minor incidents were documented, a startling revelation that underscores the perils of building such colossal structures at the time. During the construction era, worker rights were virtually non-existent, and it was considered commonplace for accidents to occur. Astonishingly, the recorded numbers were fewer than anticipated. The owners of the Titanic had calculated an expected mortality rate of one death for every hundred thousand euro spent, given that the entire project cost 1.5 million euro. This projection foresaw around 15 deaths. However, the grim reality resulted in the loss of eight lives. Most of these tragic incidents unfolded as workers sustained severe injuries from falls off the ship or its surrounding scaffolding. The last life claimed by the ill-fated vessel before its catastrophic maritime accident was that of James Dobbin, a 43-year-old shipwright. Explosion of the Titanic. Doubt has been cast upon the widely accepted narrative surrounding the Titanic's demise, as a survivor boldly asserts that the colossal ship met its end not due to an iceberg collision but rather a devastating explosion. In the records of maritime history, the Titanic stands as the inaugural Grand Cruiser, sparking unparalleled excitement among the populace. However, the vessel's existence was tragically ephemeral, succumbing to a fate that has long been recounted as a catastrophic encounter with an immense iceberg, causing severe damage to nearly 300 feet of the right side of the hull. Contrary to this narrative, a survivor named Voganak Barret challenges the iceberg theory in a series of interviews, offering a captivating alternative perspective. In Barret's account, there is a conspicuous absence of any mention of an iceberg. Instead, he delves into a detailed narrative of a colossal explosion that relentlessly cleaved the Titanic into two distinct halves. In an era when such claims were met with skepticism, Burette's assertions were corroborated by numerous fellow survivors. According to Burett, the sequence of events commenced with a minor explosion, and astonishingly, the Titanic continued its course for approximately 60 minutes before the inevitable descent into the abyss. The prevailing ignorance among engineers of that time regarding the repercussions of electrolysis meant that the initial explosion was dismissed as inconsequential. Little did they realize that this oversight would pave the way for a subsequent, more formidable explosion, ultimately rending the ship in twain. A select few who lent credence to Burritt's assertions posited that had the ship's captain extinguished the lights after the initial explosion, the entire ship and its occupants might have been spared. Did the Titanic sink because of an optical illusion? A groundbreaking theory has emerged proposing that an optical illusion spawned by the differing densities of two air currents may have been the elusive trigger behind the tragic fate of the Titanic. According to the intricate thesis put forth by British historian Tim Moulton, the transatlantic behemoth navigated from the warmth of the Gulf Stream into the icy embrace of the Labrador Current. In this perilous journey, a column of air set in motion a thermal inversion wherein layers of frigid air lurked beneath layers of warmer air. The demarcation between these layers acted as a refracting lens, 
unleashing the optical phenomenon known as Fata Morgana. This mirage, a distant, inverted image appearing deceptively close, played a sinister role in concealing the mammoth iceberg between two deceptive horizons. Astonishingly, the ship's control cabin only beheld the looming danger when it was practically a mere mile away. Compounding the calamity, the nearby ocean liner, the California, held the potential to aid in the Titanic's evacuation. However, the same miracle that misled the Titanic also led California astray, causing it to mistake the colossal ship for a much smaller vessel. Adding to the complexity, the abnormal stratification of air thwarted the Morse distress signals dispatched by the Titanic from reaching California, positioned less than 10 miles away. Mystery of human remains on the Titanic. The tragic sinking of the RMS Titanic on April 15, 1912, resulted in a staggering loss of about 1,500 passengers and crew. In the aftermath, a grim discovery unfolded as around 340 victims were found afloat in the water, clad in their life jackets. However, the fate of the remaining 1,160 individuals remains shrouded in mystery, evoking questions that persist to this day. James Cameron, a seasoned explorer who has undertaken 33 expeditions to the wreckage, asserts that he has never encountered any human remains during his extensive visits. Various theories attempt to unravel the enigma surrounding the missing bodies. Some experts propose that intense storms on the fateful night might have scattered victims over a vast 50-mile area on the seafloor. Alternatively, another hypothesis suggests that hundreds of people were trapped within the sinking ship, exposing them to currents of oxygenated water and, more significantly, the relentless scavengers of the deep sea that thrive on carcasses. Titanic expert Robert Ballard introduces the intriguing possibility of finding well-preserved bodies within the ship's engine room, located deep within its structure. This speculation gained traction with the resurgence of a compelling photograph featuring a pair of leather boots resting on the seafloor. The arrangement of the boots strongly suggests that they landed there while still attached to a person's feet, reigniting discussions about the untold stories that lie within the titanic submerged chambers. John Jacob Astor IV John Jacob Astor IV, a man of multifaceted accomplishments, had a remarkable and extensive professional journey. Born on July 13, 1864, into the opulent Astor family, he was the result of the union between William Backhouse Astor and Carolyn Webster Schirmerhorn. Among the five children, he stood as the sole son, his life continually marked by the opulence associated with the prestigious Astor surname. Astor's educational journey began at St. Paul's School in Concord, New Hampshire, and culminated with his completion of training at Harvard University. In 1894, he ventured into the realm of science fiction, publishing a novel titled A Journey to Other Worlds, where he envisaged life in the year 2000 on Saturn and Jupiter. Despite his diverse pursuits, including being a businessman, real estate developer, novelist, inventor, and lieutenant colonel during the Spanish-American War, his wealth primarily stemmed from astute real estate investments. In 1897, Astor unveiled the luxurious Hotel Astoria, a groundbreaking establishment considered the most opulent in the world at the time, built in collaboration with his cousin, Willie Waldorf. His body recovered from the Atlantic on April 22nd, bore identifiers such as initials embroidered on his jacket and a distinctive pocket watch. This very watch would become a cherished item carried by his son, Vincent, throughout his life. The Engineer's Sacrifice on that fateful day when the Titanic met its watery grave, it carried down with it the heroic lives of many individuals, particularly the unsung heroes within the engineering realm. Under the command of Chief Engineer Officer Joseph Bell, a dedicated team of 24 engineers, six electrical engineers, two boilermakers, a plumber, and a clerk were on board. Tragically, the entire complement of engineers, along with numerous firemen and coal trimmers, faced an untimely demise. The magnitude of the sacrifice made by these valiant men often goes unnoticed, yet their actions played a pivotal role in the salvation of countless lives that would have otherwise succumbed to the icy depths. While no verbal testament remains from these individuals, 
the tangible proof of their significance is glaringly evident. The Titanic, defying the odds, remained afloat for a considerably longer duration, a testament to the invaluable minutes bought by the engineers who willingly sacrificed their lives for the greater good. As the colossal vessel collided with the iceberg, those who were not on duty that day swiftly responded, rushing to the boiler rooms. Their collective effort aimed at staving off the impending disaster, buying precious time for assistance to arrive and lifeboats to be deployed. The untold story of these engineers unveils a narrative of selflessness and bravery, illustrating how their sacrifice became the unsung lifeline that kept hope afloat amidst the chaos of that tragic day. Hero of the Titanic Disaster Thomas Andrews, born on February 7, 1873, emerged as a luminary British naval architect whose profound impact extended across the construction of numerous ocean liners. His journey began amidst affluence, growing up in a well-to-do family. Taking a pivotal turn, he apprenticed at the Harland and Wolfe shipyards in Belfast, where his uncle, Lord Perry, served as the president. Through years of dedicated effort, Andrews ascended the ranks, ultimately earning the esteemed position of general manager of the company. His acclaim soared when he dismantled and reconstructed the White Star Liner SS Suevik, marking a turning point in his career. In 1908, Andrews assumed the monumental responsibility of overseeing the construction of three opulent Olympic-class liners for the White Star Line. These vessels not only boasted grandeur, but also stood out for their unprecedented size. For Andrews, these liners symbolized the zenith of his career. Meticulously addressing even the minutest imperfections in the inaugural Olympic liner, he sought perfection in the subsequent creation, the Titanic. As the Titanic embarked on its maiden voyage on April 10, 1912, Andrews, accompanied by a select team of eight workers and engineers, closely scrutinized the vessel for any shortcomings. Tragically, on April 14, disaster struck when the Titanic collided with an iceberg. In a heart-wrenching realization, Andrews swiftly comprehended the ship's fate. Alongside most of his team, he met his demise that day, a somber end to the life of a visionary architect who dedicated his existence to the pursuit of maritime excellence, Titanic replicas. The astonishing success of James Cameron's Titanic movie is nothing short of monumental, boasting a worldwide box office revenue that could fund the construction of nearly 11 replicas of the Titanic itself. Reflect for a moment on your own experience. Perhaps you recall watching Titanic on the big screen when it first graced theaters, or renting it on VHS from your local blockbuster. The reason for this collective memory is clear. Titanic holds the title of the highest-grossing film in cinema history, surpassing the remarkable milestone of $1 billion in revenue. This cinematic masterpiece not only enthralled audiences, but also garnered an impressive array of accolades, including 11 Oscars, 73 other awards, and 45 nominations. The film's success, however, comes with a substantial price tag. The original budget allocated for this cinematic marvel was a staggering $200 million, a sum that could have sufficed to create an authentic replica of the Titanic itself. James Cameron's commitment to authenticity was unparalleled. Immersing himself in the project, he dived into the Titanic wreck a remarkable 12 times, capturing intricate details through photographs. Every effort was made to replicate the ship faithfully, down to the paintings adorning its interiors. Cameron's dedication extended to meticulous details, including the precise reproduction of first-class dining room chairs. However, artistic liberties were taken, notably in the portrayal of Rose and Jack's encounter, a physical impossibility on the actual ship where strict class segregation was enforced. The Titanic had more than one fatal flaw. Delving into the perplexing mystery of the Titanic's rapid descent, one can't help but question how a colossal 41,730 metric ton ship succumbed to the icy depths in less than three hours. It defies the expectations for vessels of such size and quality, especially considering the Titanic's lofty moniker of being unsinkable. Unraveling this enigma, Tim Folk, a metallurgist at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, uncovers a surprising culprit. 
one of the Titanic's seemingly inconspicuous components, the three million wrought iron rivets used to bind its sections. Intriguingly, Folk's meticulous analysis of steel and rivet samples salvaged from the shipwreck reveals a startling revelation. The wrought iron in these rivets contains three times the permissible amount of slag, a glassy residue left behind during the iron refining process. This surplus presence of slag renders the rivets alarmingly brittle when subjected to extremely cold temperatures, a critical factor given the frigid conditions of the iceberg-laden waters. The consequences of this metallurgical flaw become starkly evident. Upon the infamous collision with the iceberg, the heads of these compromised rivets snapped off, dislodging the fasteners from their designated holes. This breach allowed a rapid influx of water between the separated hull plates, leading to the swift demise of the Titanic. The seemingly inconsequential rivets, ironically, played a pivotal role in the accelerated sinking of the supposedly unsinkable ship, challenging preconceived notions and adding a layer of intrigue to the tragedy that unfolded on that fateful night. Full Moon Consider the celestial dance of the moon, for it is said that the full moon, with its luminous presence, might have orchestrated the fatal encounter between the Titanic and the iceberg. In our contemporary age, the allure of supermoons sweeps over social media, inundating feeds with captivating images and videos. Yet this cosmic phenomenon is not a recent fascination. Supermoons have graced the skies since the moon's inception. Some experts posit a captivating theory. The Titanic's tragic fate may be intertwined with a supermoon, an exceedingly rare alignment of the sun, full moon, and earth. During such celestial occurrences, the combined gravitational forces of the sun and moon amplify, resulting in a global spectacle known as a spring tide. This cosmic ballet causes unusually low tides and exceptionally high tides, altering the rhythm of the oceans. In the records of history on January 4, 1912, a full moon bid Earth a close, intimate pass, ending a mere six minutes before embarking on its celestial trajectory. This lunar rendezvous marked the closest approach since the year 8796, with the next anticipated occurrence not until the distant future of 2257. These extraordinary cosmic events induced remarkably high tides, surpassing expectations. The consequence? Icebergs, once grounded in shallow waters, found newfound buoyancy. The prevailing theory suggests that the potent tides unleashed a fleet of icebergs into the ill-fated path of the Titanic, setting in motion a chain of events that would forever alter the course of maritime history. The only Japanese person on the Titanic, among the 1,500 survivors of the Titanic disaster, a unique figure emerged in the form of Masabumi Hosuno. As fate would have it, he stood as the sole Japanese passenger aboard the ill-fated vessel. At 42 years old, Hosuno, a civil servant at the Japanese Ministry of Transportation, held the distinction of being a second-class passenger. Two years before the tragic maritime incident, Hosuno was dispatched to Russia to delve into the intricacies of the state railway system. Upon completion of his assignment, he made a stopover in London, ultimately leading to his embarkation on the Titanic. Hosuno, conscious of the societal norms and the potential disgrace his survival might bring to his loved ones, grappled with the decision to board a lifeboat designated for women and children. This internal struggle was indicative of his deep sense of honor and loyalty. However, the aftermath of the catastrophe was harsh for Hosuno. A series of interviews with both American and Japanese media led to his dismissal from the Ministry of Transportation. The Japanese press went so far as to brand him a coward, asserting that his actions during the sinking betrayed the revered samurai spirit of sacrifice. Despite facing ostracism and calls for ritual suicide to restore his honor, Hosuno's resilience and the acknowledgement of his valor during the tragedy prompted a reconsideration. He was eventually reinstated to his position within the Ministry of Transportation, a tenure that endured until he died in 1939. The Titanic broke in half. Recall that captivating moment from the Titanic movie when the colossal ship dramatically snapped in half. It was a pivotal point where the fate of those still aboard seemed sealed. 
a moment of realization that escape was implausible. Strikingly, despite numerous survivors attesting to witnessing the ship's fracture firsthand, the broader public in 1912 dismissed this unsettling truth. The prevailing belief was that the Titanic simply sank as a unified entity. It wasn't until the year 1985 that the skepticism began to crumble. Robert Ballard's discovery of the Titanic's wreckage provided undeniable evidence of the ship's division. The bow section lay more than 650 meters north of the stern, offering a visual testament to the severity of the disaster. This revelation shattered the prevailing notion and finally validated the accounts of those who saw the Titanic break into two distinct parts. Picture the profound impact of this revelation. A colossal vessel, comparable to a twig, sundered in the frigid depths. Some witnesses even recounted hearing the ominous crack as the fracture occurred. The ensuing panic among passengers is palpable. Imagine the sheer horror of witnessing the very ground beneath your feet disintegrate while stranded in the vastness of the open sea. The first movie Titanic. Just a mere month after the infamous Titanic disaster, the world witnessed the release of the first ever movie depicting this iconic shipwreck. This cinematic venture, entitled Saved from the Titanic, was a silent film as the era had not yet embraced the mastery of sound in movies. Directed by the Frenchman Etienne Arnaud, the film spanned a concise 10 minutes, yet it carried an intriguing twist. What sets this short film apart is its inclusion of Dorothy Gibson, an American actress who stood among the 705 survivors of the catastrophic event that unfolded among the 2,224 souls on board. At the tender age of 22, Gibson had already etched her mark as a singer and dancer in theaters, vaudevilles, and Broadway musicals from 1906 to 1911. Her visage adorned the pages of notable magazines like Cosmopolitan and the Saturday Evening Post as an advertising model. Gibson's foray into the cinematic realm was serendipitous, guided by the independent Moving Pictures Company upon discovering her survival. Engaged in a game of bridge just before the ill-fated iceberg collision, she miraculously found herself on the first lifeboat, later rescued by the RMS Carpathia after enduring a chilling five-and-a-half-hour ordeal in the frigid North Atlantic. Titanic wreckage. There's a somber forecast that the Titanic's wreckage resting in the depths of the Atlantic Ocean for 110 years, might cease to exist by the year 2030. The once majestic remnants of the iconic ship face an ominous fate as a result of the relentless onslaught of natural forces. Expeditions to the site, undertaken by various experts, have revealed a disheartening reality. The Titanic's structure is undergoing significant corrosion. This ominous observation has led to a unanimous consensus among researchers that the ship's disappearance is inevitable, with the relentless march of time playing a decisive role. Multiple factors contribute to the accelerated decay of this maritime relic. The frequent visits by treasure hunters and curious tourists have taken a toll, disrupting the delicate balance of the underwater environment. Additionally, the area has suffered from overfishing, diminishing the number of fish that once helped maintain the ecological equilibrium by consuming organic matter in the vicinity of the Titanic. A peculiar and previously unknown bacterium named Alamonis titanicae in honor of the ill-fated vessel has been identified as a key player in this degradation. In 2010, a team of specialists led by Henrietta Mann delved into the mysteries of this microscopic menace. Unlike conventional decay, these bacteria don't consume the Titanic's surface incrementally. Building Titanic II, a colossal maritime endeavor designed to replicate the legendary RMS Titanic and witness the dreams of Australian tycoon Clive Palmer unfold. This ambitious project was revealed on April 2012, a carefully timed announcement coinciding with the centenary of the RMS Titanic's departure from Southampton. Palmer, the quirky entrepreneur, envisioned the Titanic II as the flagship of his esteemed Blue Star Line, promising a regal debut in 2016, cruising from Southampton to New York. However, the grand reveal faced delays, eventually resetting for 2018. Amidst the unfolding timeline, skepticism arose, with doubts surfacing about Palmer's commitment, given his track record of unrealized ventures. 
By early 2018, the Blue Star Line's silence added to the suspense, leaving enthusiasts and skeptics alike in limbo. CNN injected a new twist in October 2018, asserting that the Titanic II would embark on its maiden voyage in 2022. Palmer's vision for the ocean liner included accommodating 2,400 passengers and 900 crew members, paying homage to the original Titanic's occupancy in 1912. Yet, fate took an unexpected turn in 2020 as the global COVID-19 pandemic forced a regrettable postponement, shrouding the project's future in uncertainty. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. A gripping moment unfolded as a survivor of the Titanic, overwhelmed with emotion, tearfully declared, the iceberg did not destroy the ship. This heart-wrenching statement brings forth the complex and nuanced reality surrounding the iconic maritime tragedy. The survivor's tears tell a story of survival that transcends the simplistic narrative of iceberg impact. As the survivor grapples with their emotions, we are reminded that the Titanic's demise was not solely the result of a collision with an iceberg. It encompassed a myriad of factors, from inadequate lifeboat provisions to chaotic evacuations. The tearful revelation invites us to delve into the intricate layers of the disaster, exploring the human experiences that unfolded amidst the chaos. In the wake of this survivor's emotional disclosure, the Titanic's tragic tale takes on new dimensions, urging us to reflect on the multifaceted nature of the events that unfolded that fateful night on April 15, 1912. What do you think about what we just showed you? Finding the Titanic. The quest to rediscover the Titanic unfolded across a span of more than 70 years, shrouding the iconic ship's resting place in mystery after it succumbed to the depths of the Atlantic Ocean on that fateful day. It wasn't until September 1, 1985, that a momentous breakthrough occurred, marking the end of the prolonged search. A collaborative effort, led by the renowned American oceanographer Dr. Robert Ballard, in a joint French-American expedition, unveiled the submerged relic. Resting two miles beneath the ocean's surface, the Titanic emerged from its silent slumber with the assistance of a submersible named Argo. This groundbreaking discovery not only rekindled the spirit of exploration, but also paved the way for a new era of underwater adventure, inspiring a fresh wave of ocean explorers. Dr. Ballard's lifelong aspiration to locate the most famous ship in history found its roots in his childhood in San Diego, California. Growing up near the ocean, his fascination with the vast blue expanse became an integral part of his identity. Eager to delve deeper into the mysteries beneath the waves, he embraced scuba diving as soon as he could, and armed with a degree in chemistry and geology from the University of California, ventured into the Army. Subsequently, his journey led him to the Navy's deep submergence group. The Three Dogs When we reflect on the tragic sinking of the Titanic, our minds often gravitate toward the profound loss of human lives during that fateful accident. Yet a lesser-known aspect adds a poignant layer to the narrative, the presence of dogs aboard the ill-fated ship on that chilling night. While the tragedy unfolded, 12 dogs were officially documented as passengers, although historical accounts hint that there might have been more, their stories hidden in the shadows of the calamity. Among these canine passengers, a mere trio defied the odds, and survived the harrowing ordeal. These resilient survivors, all of diminutive stature, comprised two Pomeranians and a Pekingese. Their smaller size proved advantageous, allowing them to be discreetly concealed beneath blankets or within coats as they were whisked away to lifeboats. Had their presence been discovered, the likelihood of their inclusion on the lifeboats would have been precarious. A poignant tale emerges from the logs of passengers. One entry immortalizes the bond between 50-year-old Elizabeth Isham and her Great Dane, a loyal companion housed in the ship's kennels. Isham, fortunate enough to secure a place in a lifeboat, faced a heart-wrenching decision. Regrettably, she was informed that her beloved Great Dane was deemed too large to join her. Faced with this dilemma, Isham chose an act of heartbreaking devotion. She abandoned her seat in the lifeboat, opting to remain with her cherished canine companion. In the aftermath, 
Isham's lifeless form was discovered a few days later. The Musicians On that fateful night when the Titanic met its tragic end, the musicians aboard the ship emerged as unsung heroes, using the power of music to console and soothe the panic-stricken passengers. While we've explored the sacrificial acts of the engineers, it's essential to shed light on another group of selfless individuals, the musicians, who also made the ultimate sacrifice for the greater good. For over two hours, these dedicated musicians continued to play, even as chaos ensued and passengers struggled to find safety in lifeboats. Initially, their melodies consisted of upbeat ragtimes and waltzes, echoing the repertoire designated for the first-class areas. However, as the gravity of the situation dawned upon them, the musicians likely adapted their tunes to match the somber reality unfolding around them. The profound impact of music on our emotions is well documented, with studies attesting to its ability to regulate and modulate our emotional states. In the face of impending disaster, the Titanic's musicians understood the therapeutic potential of their craft. By playing on, they aimed to drown out the ominous sounds of the ship breaking apart, providing a sonic shield for the passengers in their final moments. Their unwavering commitment to playing until the very end stands as a testament to the profound impact that music can have, even in the darkest hours, Miss Unsinkable. Right from the start, fingers pointed squarely at Captain E.J. Smith, the skipper of the Titanic, as the scapegoat for the calamitous tragedy. Accusations flew, asserting that he navigated the colossal vessel at an excessively high speed through treacherous waters teeming with icebergs, setting the stage for a disaster that seemed almost inevitable. It's hard to argue against this blame when you consider the Titanic was hurtling through the ocean at a formidable 22 knots, giving credence to the skepticism. Some voices in the chorus of condemnation went further, suggesting that Captain E.J. Smith was in a rivalry with Titanic's sister ship, the Olympics. There were suspicions that he aimed to outdo the crossing time of the Olympics, even with full knowledge that the sea was heavily laden with icebergs. An early warning had been received. For decades, this narrative clung to Captain E.J. Smith's legacy, casting a shadow over his once pristine reputation. It was a stain on his character that persisted until 2004, when a groundbreaking paper surfaced, challenging the prevailing narrative. Engineer Robert Essenheit, the author of this revelatory paper, proposed a novel perspective, one that diverted attention from the captain's alleged recklessness. Essenheit argued that efforts to contain a fire originating in one of the Titanic's coal bunkers might have been the catalyst for the ship maintaining its full speed. Insufficient lifeboats, Given the immense size of the Titanic and the staggering number of over 2,200 souls on board, one might assume that the ship brimmed with lifeboats to ensure everyone's safety. However, that assumption would be tragically incorrect. The shocking reality behind the staggering death toll, with more than 1,500 lives lost, stems from the Titanic's woefully inadequate provision of lifeboats. Only 12 were on board. It's an astonishing revelation that defies modern safety standards and underscores a blatant disregard for human life. Reflecting on the catastrophic events of April 15, 1912, when the iceberg struck and the Titanic began its descent into the icy depths, chaos erupted among the first-class passengers. A rush towards the lifeboats ensued, marked by panic and a glaring lack of organized evacuation. This resulted in a stark scene as the majority of the 20 lifeboats launched from the Titanic were only half full, or even less. Even if all the lifeboats had been utilized to their full capacity, they could only have accommodated half of the ship's occupants. Astonishingly, the Titanic's initial design blueprint included provisions for 64 lifeboats. However, this number was drastically reduced as the ship's owner, concerned about cluttering the deck and compromising the views of first-class passengers, made the ill-fated decision to cut down on lifeboat quantity. Ironically, on the day of the disaster, most first-class passengers were among the fortunate few who found themselves saved. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.